it's hard to find the perfect accessories for your outfit. But Jared Leto solved that dilemma in a unique way when he carried a replica of his own severed head onto the red carpet. KISS first exploded into the rock music scene in 1973 and remained one of the most famous bands of all time. Their party-hardy lyrics, catchy riffs, and fiery live shows were popular, but it was their striking appearance that really grabbed people's attention. With their signature black and white makeup designs and glittery costumes, the band's members looked like a clown troupe from the future, here to teach us how to rock and roll all night and party every day. While there was no way for anyone to take Kiss's look seriously, it nonetheless gave the band members an aura of mystery akin to superheroes. According to Kiss lead singer and bassist Gene Simmons, the band's getup was a way for them to stand out from the rest of the crowd. In the early 1970s, glam rock was all the rage. But rather than go the typical gender-bending route that many acts went down, Kiss took a more masculine approach to donning makeup. Simmons said, Getting up on stage was almost a holy place for us. So being on stage looking like a bum wasn't my idea of respect. That's where the makeup and dressing up came in. It would have obviously been a lot easier to get up on stage in jeans and t-shirts, and that would have been just as valid, but it would not have been honest. While Kiss made quite the splash when they introduced themselves to the world in outlandish costumes and far-out makeup designs, they made just as big of a splash when they decided to don board down-to-earth duds and apply makeup remover. The 1970s was a good time for the band, having scored numerous hits and played to sold-out arenas around the world. However, Kiss's audience began to dwindle by the early 1980s, with their first few albums of the decade not selling as well as previous efforts. Also, the band had undergone a lineup change, with Eric Carr and Vinnie Vincent replacing Peter Criss and Ace Frehley, respectively. To shake things up, Kiss revealed their stripped-down look on September 18, 1983, on MTV. While the debut of their new appearance helped revitalize album sales with the release of that year's Lick It Up, the audience was less than enthusiastic by Kiss's drastic fashion update. Simmons said, Everybody hated it. People didn't want the paint to come off, but you know what? Tough. It had to happen. You want your heroes to stay the same forever, but then the consequence of that is you get bored with them. We had to take it off. It had run its course. Few bands epitomized the 1980s heavy metal look better than Metallica. Denim leather, long hair, and t-shirts lionizing British heavy metal bands like Motorhead, Venom, and Diamond Head. Metallica represented the opposite of the era's hair metal fashion diametrically opposing the big perms and flashy clothing typical of the Sunset Strip scene. Metallica sported the look well into the 1990s, even after the grunge explosion practically made that particular fashion a crime. For a while, it seemed that Metallica was determined to hold on to their aggressive street style for as long as possible. However, in 1996, heavy metal fans the world over collectively wept when Metallica debuted their newest look in the music video for Until It Sleeps which saw the band with short hair and outfits that appeared to have been purchased from a Hot Topic clearance sale. Gone was their ragged regalia, now replaced by something that would not have been out of place at a Stone Temple Pilots concert. Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich told the Chicago Tribune, I was surprised at how much reaction it got, but I suppose I should have seen it coming. Metallica to a lot of people is metal, and there is a code, a lifestyle, an us versus them attitude that you have to observe to keep in everyone's good graces. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, David Bowie's appearance largely fit in with the rock star look of the era, long hair and flowing, colorful clothing. However, never one to stick with a particular style for too long, Bowie and his band went in a completely different direction in 1972, both in terms of music and fashion. It was at this time that the singer unleashed his alter ego, Ziggy Stardust, on an unsuspecting world. Typified by a shiny, futuristic ensemble and equally far-out makeup, Ziggy took the glam rock stylings at the time and launched them into strange new dimensions. The makeover may have lasted only for a year or so out of a decades-long career, but it remains one of his signature phases. Of course, this look was no accident. Bowie revealed to NPR that his decision to embrace a more sci-fi, sensual fashion design was a reaction to the hippie trends common among most rock bands at the time, saying, we brought a lot of our aesthetic sensibilities to it in terms of what we wanted to manufacture, a new kind of vocabulary, a new kind of currency. Bowie further revealed that his inspirations included Japanese kabuki theater, German expressionist movies, and poetry by Baudelaire. 
The 73rd Academy Awards saw Bjork's tune I've Seen It All from the film Dancing in the Dark nominated for Best Original Song. The Icelandic singer had never been a stranger to controversy throughout her career up to that point, so there was no reason to expect her to arrive at the prestigious event in a classy, modest evening gown. However, she may have exceeded expectations when she arrived in her infamous swan dress complete with countless feathers and a beak dangling over her shoulder, wearing the swan's neck like a scarf. But that wasn't all. The getup also included eggs that she laid as she paraded around the festivities. The dress inspired no shortage of criticism, raising eyebrows from an audience and media contingent more accustomed to the traditionally elegant apparel of ceremonies past. Its ostentatious look drew the ire of fashion watchers like Joan Rivers, and was even parodied by Kevin James at the 2002 People's Choice Awards. Of course, tradition was Bjork's target for the evening. The dress's designer, Marian Peoshki, told Vogue, It was fantastic of her, so rebellious, at a traditional occasion like the Oscars. I respect tradition, of course, but everybody and everything deserves to be laughed at from time to time. While Bjork had to endure plenty of ire for her fashion statement, she got the last laugh as her swan dress was featured in the Design Museum exhibition Rebel, 30 Years of London Fashion. This is a rather unusual creation. Yeah, my friend made it. Lady Gaga has generated almost as much attention for her daring apparel as for her music. While the singer has sported numerous outrageous looks, none of them hold a candle to the meat dress she premiered at the 2010 MTV Video Music Awards. That's right, the singer donned a dress made not out of fake meat, but real meat. Flank steak, to be exact. The fleshy ensemble also included a hat, purse, and boots made of meat, which audiences got to see when she went up on stage to accept the video of the year for Bad Romance. The reason for Gaga's outfit was to protest the US military's don't ask, don't tell policy regarding gay soldiers. However, the butchery of her dress overshadowed the political statement she was trying to make, instead sparking outcry from animal rights groups like PETA who criticized the singer's decision to don dead animal flesh for shock effect. In a conversation with Ellen DeGeneres, the singer said, It's certainly no disrespect to anyone that's vegan or vegetarian. It has many interpretations, but for me this evening it's, if we don't stand up for what we believe in, if we don't fight for our rights, pretty soon we're going to have as much rights as the meat on our bones. Still, those noble intentions didn't keep people everywhere from making fun of her. Show me dress. No, it's not. I made it myself. That is not it. Jamie! Get away from it! Singer Joy Villa used her appearance at a major awards show to make a conservative political statement, and Villa's dress made no effort to hide its meaning, as it was embellished with then-President Donald Trump's slogan, Make America Great Again. Were it not for the overtly political message, Villa's dress would have been a pretty standard outfit to wear at the 2017 Grammy Awards. Considering how divisive Trump's presidency was, Villa's dress caused quite a stir. However, the gown's designer, Andre Soriano, claimed that the slogan, Make America Great Again, had a pro-immigration connotation for it. Soriano, a Filipino immigrant and naturalized U.S. citizen, told The Hollywood Reporter, There are a lot of people that are in power that really misconstrued what this country stands for. I love this country. I'm from the Philippine Islands. I am a proud American. I really love this country. I am a minority. Joy is black. America is about immigrants. Two years later, though, Villa wore a dress to the 2019 Grammys promoting the building of a wall designed to keep out immigrants. Message received loud and clear. Janet Jackson was the perfect halftime performer at the 2004 Super Bowl, and the icing on the cake was a surprise appearance from Justin Timberlake. The two performed a cheekily sexy duet of Timberlake's song, Rock Your Body, that ended in one of the most shocking fashion moments in pop culture history, in which Timberlake ripped off part of her outfit to reveal her pierced nipple to countless viewers. The incident, now known as Nipplegate, sparked non-stop debate about whether or not it was an accident or a publicity stunt. Either way, considering the Super Bowl has always been a family-friendly event, the halftime show was a lightning rod for controversy at the time. Timberlake claimed in a 2018 Apple Music interview that the incident was unintentional and that he and Jackson had privately made their peace with the fallout that affected them afterward. You can't change what's happened, but you know, you can 
you can move forward and learn from it. Still, the announcement that Timberlake was to be the performer at the 2018 Super Bowl led to many fans wondering why he was invited back to sing at the event when Jackson, the real victim of the 2004 mishap, hadn't received her invitation back. Even if pop star and actress Cher didn't win an award at the 1986 Oscars for her acclaimed performance in Mask, she should have at least won an award for her dress. Cher made quite a splash at the festivities in a striking black ensemble that showed off her midriff and was topped off with a large mohawk. Cher told Vogue in 2019 that she wore the outfit to get back at the Academy, as she believed that they didn't take her seriously enough as an actress. I thought they hated the way I dressed, and I had young boyfriends, and they just thought I wasn't serious. So I came out and said, as you can see, I got my handbook on how to dress like a serious actress. The dress designer and longtime Cher collaborator Bob Mackie confirmed this story in an interview with The New Yorker. She was pissed off because she didn't get nominated for Mask. There were a lot of people who said, that's not fashion. And I said, of course it's not fashion. It's a crazy getup for attention. And it did get attention. People talk about it still. Are you disappointed that you didn't receive the Academy Award nomination for Mask? I mean, I was very disappointed at the time. It would have been better than not. The Met Gala frequently features celebrities sporting looks that make the rest of us normal folk wonder what makes such expensive fashion so appealing. However, one of the more confounding looks to grace the event was the one that 30 Seconds to Mars singer Jared Leto wore in 2019. His outfit for the evening was eye-catching enough on its own, a long red dress adorned with a string of diamonds. But it was the added accessory of a life-size replica of his own head that really, well, turned heads. That event's theme was camp notes on fashion. But Leto's design choice left many questioning how a severed head was camp. Leto's head is certainly a bizarre fashion accessory, but it may not have even been his weirdest Met Gala look. In 2023, he topped himself by attending the show in a gigantic cat costume. Meow.